Early evening is raccoon time. This is May 4th, about 7 p.m. I wonder what's going on here. Let's wait for the others. Oh well, let's go. On second thought, better go back. It turns out there's a third, almost left behind. So, are they off to look for turtle nests? to the woods. I bet they're headed for the dumpster across the golf course behind the condos. In the late afternoon, raccoons from other directions also make their way to the dumpster. They seem to be all lactating females who probably are hungrier than other raccoons. The males can afford to sleep in until later. Do you think they've been fed here? A word of caution. Raccoons and bats are the wild animals that are the most frequent carriers of rabies in Florida. Raccoons won't show symptoms of rabies for some time after being infected. Something to think about when you're making friends with a raccoon. While mom checks out the dumpster or begs for food, the little ones, too young to read, nose around nearby. Ignorance is bliss. The only venomous snakes I've seen in the preserve are cottonmouths, also known as water moccasins. Contrary to popular opinion, they're pretty easygoing, not inclined to bite, and the raccoons are too large for the snake to eat. Raccoons are the quintessential omnivores. Almost any kind of food will do but it's healthier to stay away from the garbage. I think this one just caught a lizard, one of the Cuban brown annals that like to hang out on these wood piles. We can think of it as a service to conservation. The annals are not native to Florida, but are so well established we'll never get rid of them. The raccoon's front paws are extremely sensitive to touch, probably more than any other mammals. Their brain's cerebral cortex is specialized for interpreting tactile stimuli. They have vibrissi, or sensory hairs, above their front claws that detect objects like the whiskers of their muzzles do. So whatever's hiding in this old stump just might be out of luck.
the raccoon in the creek is probably hunting crayfish or mussels or any kind of little water animals, and it would prefer not to be watched. I was surprised to see this crayfish out for a walk. It's off on a dangerous adventure, but it's how they spread the population to a new location in a creek or swamp or flooded ditch. Another evening on the main trail, I've just seen a raccoon way down there digging for something. When I come up to it, I see some empty turtle eggs, and the raccoon just finished eating one, I guess. I stand back off the trail a little way to see what'll happen. It's not crazy about the idea of getting closer to me, but there must be more eggs in my direction and it really wants them. Around here it's probably never had trouble with humans. There's the turtle nest. When I find a nest after dark, I think they eat the eggs right at the nest hole. It's usual to see the empty eggshells scattered close to the hole. There's more of this back and forth until, I guess, the nest is empty. A disappointed fish crow waits up above us somewhere. For a while I thought the raccoons and skunks and other mammals were the only turtle nest robbers. They left empty shells scattered near the hole. An empty hole without eggshells must not have been a turtle nest or the turtle had not laid. Not so. Fish crows are nest robbers too and they fly away with the entire egg. The turtles nest during daylight hours. The crafty crows spy on them and dig out the eggs before the raccoons wake up in the early evening. Here's a peninsula cooter digging her typical three-hole nest. When she's finished, the watching crow is right there to rob the nursery, you might say. It will carry off all the eggs one by one, no empty shells left behind to tell what happened. I go up to inspect the nest. I think about reburying the exposed egg, but I know that the crow will be back to dig it out again. The nest robber raccoon we just saw was eating softshell turtle eggs. Like the cooters, the soft shells lay in the higher ground along the trails where the nest won't be flooded and the sun will warm the eggs below. But that's where the raccoons will easily find them. Even though, as you see here, the turtle tries hard to disguise where she laid. And so our raccoon is back to work, looking for a second course although it's already had some high-quality protein. I wonder how far it will travel, and what it will encounter before it turns in for the night. One morning on the golf course, what is this? Two male raccoons mixing it up? The smaller seems to be marking the ground with urine or scent from his anal glands. 
This is in July, not the usual breeding season, so it's probably a territorial confrontation. Sometimes two or more males will share and defend a territory, but the retreating fellow must not be one of them. I miss the end of the fight, but I bet the victor said... This raccoon is being recycled. They don't live very long in the wild. Three years and they're pushing their luck. What kills them? In some areas, it's canine distemper virus, and smart as they are, not being able to cross the road safely. And then there are the predators. Not so many around here as in wilder places, but we do have bobcats, great horned owls, and alligators, any of which might make a raccoon worry if raccoons can worry. The fright response is to climb a tree. Sometimes helpful, but probably not against bobcats or owls. I only had time for this quick shot of a bobcat one morning on the edge of the golf course before it was gone into the brush. This one sits on the main trail about 2 o'clock on a July afternoon. It's looking at the spot where I often see marsh rabbits come out to browse the trailside plants. In most of Florida, rabbits, cotton rats, and gray squirrels are the bobcat's main food items. Big raccoons can put up a good fight, remember the teeth, and the cats usually leave them alone, but an unprotected young raccoon would be no problem. Gray squirrels themselves are predators when the opportunity arises. I caught this one eating the well-developed embryo from a bird's egg one spring morning. Some of the other mammals here, such as armadillos, moles, and red foxes, I covered in a previous video. I'll end this with river otters. I'd only occasionally seen them, but never clearly. Then one afternoon, right next to the bridge above the dam, we find these two. They're on their way from the window pond to the creek below the dam. I guess they know or suspect we're on the bridge nearby, but their eyesight is not good for distance, and we're quiet and don't move. They're cautious, but not afraid. 
Otters, like other members of the weasel family, are tough customers, not easily intimidated by larger animals. It's uncommon, but they do occasionally attack people. Recently, there have been several attacks on people in Florida. The attacks happen in or around the water. Often the person attacked is severely and repeatedly bitten and clawed. They're often called unprovoked attacks because it was not clear what set the otter off. They can carry rabies, and that should always be suspected. The incessant bird squawking you hear is from the grackles and blackbirds at the Audubon hut feeders across the pond. These two seem to be reluctant to finish the crossing to the creek. Is it because of us, or are they just not ready to get wet again? The otters went through the bushes and down the bank to the creek where they were swallowed up in the black water. <laughs> 